welcome back to my YouTube channel. Erin Lim Rhodes here. Yes, I'm officially going by my new last name, Rhodes, and I got married since I last talked to you all. I'm lying. I have been married and I have officially announced my marriage since my last video. We're married! Hey. We're the Rhodes. Surprise. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you about my secret intimate wedding ceremony that I had at the top of the year. So on 12121, I got married to the man of my dreams, the love of my life, my best friend on this planet, Joshua Rhodes. And it was really the best day ever. I've got a lot of questions from you guys asking, how did I do it? Why did I do it? When did I do it? Details, 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 because you guys love details. So let's get into it. Firstly, everyone always wants to know, how did I meet my husband? So we were both going to this church separately. We did not know each other and we had only met a couple times and then I got baptized and the dunker man that day was Joshua. He is a volunteer at our church and he randomly was asked to help baptize people. He's not a pastor. Everyone always assumes that or asks that. He's just a volunteer. He was dunking that day, like putting people into the water and I was in his dunking line and I got baptized. So the beginning of our story literally starts in that moment, but not really because we didn't date till months later. We would keep seeing each other, running into each other. He says, I made the first move because I was thirsty and approached him at the water cooler. I was literally just trying to get a LaCroix and he was there and we had a conversation. We later start having all of these conversations after church, hour long conversations. Like everyone has left the building and we're still talking. And then one random night we decided to get tacos and that's when it all happened. That's when it became official. No, actually before that. And then finally he asked me, hey, do you wanna go mini golfing? Cause he knew that I was a golfer. He asked if I wanted to go mini golfing with a group of friends. And I said, of course. He calls me that night and says, everyone bailed and they're not coming. Would you still like to go have dinner and get a drink with me? Duh. So we go, we have a lovely night. It was our first official unofficial date and he's such a gentleman. He did not try to kiss me. I'm giving you too many details, but anyway, our first date is not when we had our first kiss, but I left that night feeling like, wow, it felt like I had a first kiss. And that's pretty much new when I was gonna marry him. Then two years later, he proposes to me in my parents' backyard. Such a surprise, so beautiful. That was in September. And then over the holidays, we decided that we wanted to get married top of the year. We got engaged to get married so we just said screw it because there's COVID we can't even do any planning We have no idea when this pandemic is gonna literally die. So we just decided let's start the new year together We are doing all of these things like looking for homes and planning our lives So let's just do the dang thing and keep it small and keep it intimate We only wanted our immediate families no one else because COVID so we are thinking top of the year and of course I like fun numbers since it was going to be 2021. I was like, hmm, what sounds good with 21 at the end? The 21st, one, two, one, two, one. And that is how we found the date. And because it's COVID, everyone is getting married right now. And we originally wanted just a courthouse wedding, but the courts are all filled up, backed up. No one can be there in person. We didn't want to do the whole Zoom thing. So we had a notary give us the marriage license. We are picking up our marriage license today. And then Joshua's dad got ordained in the state of California. And he was the one that married us, which made it even more special and epic. On that day, we didn't do a lot of the traditional things. We saw each other the morning of. We saw each other before I walked down the aisle. We didn't have a first dance and we, there wasn't a father-daughter dance or a mother-daughter dance because in the back of our minds, we were thinking we're gonna have the traditional wedding in time with everyone there. It'll be big, it'll be proper. So we were saving a couple things, but I did wear a dress. Now I didn't wear white. I wore like an off-white cream and a lot of people are asking about my dress. I actually found it when I was scrolling on Instagram and an ad popped up and it was not even a wedding dress that was being advertised. It was just a girl wearing this silky cream 
creamish off-white dress. And I said to myself, wow, that could make a really pretty casual, small ceremony wedding dress. Buy it, it comes a couple weeks later. It was from Australia and it didn't quite fit, so I had to get it tailored. And I was apprehensive because I was like, oh, it's not white. But a friend of mine told me, this will look way better in pictures. You're having a micro, micro wedding anyway. So this is perfect. So I went with it and another girlfriend of mine said, wear a veil, you will regret not wearing it, just do it. So I went on Etsy and I found a $35 veil and it really worked out. Didn't have shoes, shout out to my stylist who got me some Flor de Maria shoes. I work with her all award season. She gives me all of my amazing shoes that I wear on the red carpets. So I wore those shoes and my parents got me some beautiful, beautiful jewelry as a wedding gift. I was really grateful for that. I also went to work that morning. <laughs> I shot the rundown and then I went to my parents' house and that is where we had our micro wedding. Same place where we got engaged. It was under the gazebo. My girlfriend who works on the rundown, Pretty Pure Petals, Anna, she did all of the florals. I had just finished watching Bridgerton. Great show. And I was obsessed with the flowers. And so I was literally watching Bridgerton, taking videos and photos of scenes and I was sending it to her like, I want Bridgerton vibes. I want this waterfall garland thing. I want these flowers. So she made this beautiful, beautiful waterfall garland that is all around the gazebo. Lemon leaves and carnations. She did that gorgeous bouquet. I was just sending her random color vibes and tones that I liked and she managed to pull it off. And she also made this beautiful garland for the table, the centerpiece. And man, I really did feel like I was in Bridgerton living my best life. My dad did walk me down the aisle. He walked me from my Nana's bedroom to the gazebo. It was at 4 p.m. So the sun was just setting. The weather was perfect and sunny that day, but also a little bit chilly. And my dad and I shared this really sweet moment before he walked me down. And he showed me a letter that I had written him when I was in elementary school, just telling him how much I loved him and looked up to him and wanted to be like him. And it was really emotional and heartfelt. And, and I love that we just got to bond in that moment. He walked me down the aisle and Joshua and I had the most beautiful, beautiful ceremony. His dad killed it. You would think that he had been doing this his whole life. This was the one and only wedding he had ever officiated. And during the ceremony, he literally just felt in his heart that everyone should say a little something to us before we exchange vows. And he said, first, we're gonna hear from your family, Aaron, and then we're gonna hear from Joshua, your family. And everyone wasn't expecting it. It was so in the moment. And because they didn't have anything rehearsed, you really felt like it was coming from their heart. And everyone just said such amazing, sweet things to us to kind of send us off. Then the ceremony was over and we took these bomb photos. Thank you, Ridge Gordon, for those bomb photos that we will be blowing up and hanging in every single person's home. <laughs> just kidding. My mom does want her photos blown up though. And then we had Barbecue, Bloodsoe's Barbecue in Los Angeles is the absolute best. It's one of our favorite places. Whenever we go, we go ham, we really indulge. We had brisket and ribs and chicken and sausage and collard greens and mac and cheese. Mwah. Yeah, I really definitely did blow the diet for that one. I was trying to be better leading up to that day, but I definitely said, screw it. For cake, we had my favorite carrot cake from Magnolia and it was divine. It was really large. We saved some of it and we devoured it all and finished it all in I don't know, three days. And then for drinks, I found this really cute place on Instagram. Actually, my sister, my maid of honor, found this really cute drink spot on Instagram and you can have custom cocktails. They give you everything you need, the mixer, the measuring, the alcohol, and they put it in a really cute crate. So it worked with the little aesthetic that we had going on. My drink was the Arenita Margarita because I love a spicy marg and my Nana calls me Arenita, so that was really cute. And the other drink for Joshua, was the Joshua Mule. Joshua is a nickname in our family for Joshua because my Nana can't pronounce Joshua. She calls him Joshua and it's just Joshua Moscow, Joshua Mule. So yeah, it was really cute. And yeah, we just spent the night bonding with our two families. It was really a, a cool moment that 
we all just got to spend quality time, play little games around the table, and we went home that night and we went to work the next day. It was perfect, it was so our style. What I love about us doing our wedding this way is that it was our way. So many wedding planners and so many people say, your wedding is not about you, it's about your guests. You wanna think about them and what they would want and what would make them have a really good time. And I kind of just want to put an end to that. Your wedding should be about you two, about the union of two families, about the union of two individuals that are coming together as one, and it should be catered towards your liking. And what I also love about it was that it was, for the most part, stress-free. It was at my parents' backyard, so we didn't have to pay for a venue. It was food that we really love for just our two families, so that didn't break the bank. My good girlfriend did the florals, and that just made it that much more special and it was us supporting a female owned small business and e even down to the drinks that was a small business started by a husband and a wife and I just am so appreciative of the people who helped or who even just gave us words of encouragement on that day and we did it secretly because I wanted us to be able to enjoy that moment and not have to stress about going public or having to tell everyone all at once or even just stress with inviting other people. That's why I really loved that it was just our families. There was literally no chaos. So after all of this happened and we got our photos back, we saw how perfect it was and we were just like reliving those moments thinking to ourselves we wouldn't change a thing it truly was special and magical and we just said you know what we're saving to buy a home why spend so much money on this crazy traditional wedding in the future where you know the venue is fifteen thousand dollars for the venue alone and then you have to worry about the vendors and then you have to worry about bringing in the parking and the bathrooms and the table like just so many things to worry about that we decided let's save that money, put it towards a down payment on a home, and in the future we can have a vow renewal party or an anniversary celebration and we can safely invite our family and our friends. And the, the thing that I see my girlfriends stressing about right now is will it happen or won't it happen and putting off starting their lives with their partner because of this pandemic and COVID and wanting to throw this lavish celebration. And for us, Joshua and I were so easy and us getting married really was about us starting this life in this new chapter together and that was so important for us that we didn't want to wait for when it was okay to have a party and if you are engaged right now and you're trying to figure out your wedding seriously go the micro wedding route it is that much better you'll be thanking yourselves when you are trying to buy a home when you're trying to plan for your future it's the way to go and believe me when I say the vow renewal party will be a rager and people will have either been tested, vaccinated, or we will have herd immunity and it'll just be completely safe to do so. So that's me, that's my story. That was my wedding. I'm just so happy. I'm Erin Lim Rhodes. Oh, and for my ring, I decided to do a simple little band. This is exclusive, I haven't told anyone else this yet. For this, I did a little band, and on it is my birthstone, which is a diamond, <laughs> lucky me, and his birthstone, which is an emerald, and green is my favorite color, so it was meant to be. And I just wear it all the time like this. It's easy when I don't wanna wear my rock when I don't want to wear my big old rock. And I also wanted it simple because I didn't want to take away from my engagement ring. It really is gorgeous. He did such a good job. Maybe I'll upload another video on how to get your man to get the best ring ever. If you guys want more, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, let me know what you want me to talk about. I'm here for you guys. Oh my gosh, I haven't slept in days. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you for watching my video. Love you all. My eyes twitching. Like, subscribe. Do you see it twitching? All right, it's time to go. Goodbye. Am I pressing the right button?